Hello guys, welcome back to Archangel RC and welcome to the flight review of the new MyFly Dream Crosswind Mini. Since I already did an introduction and build video which you can check out here, now we can get right to it without wasting precious time. Despite this being my first time dealing with the Crosshair Autopilot system, it was quite easy to set it up and it does come with presets for the different planes my Fly Dream makes, so just use the ones for the Crosswind Mini and went with it. I was really keen to test out the auto takeoff function, so decided to do so on the maiden flight. After all, if everything has been set up and calibrated well and your autopilot is obviously stabilizing in the correct directions, there should be no reason why this wouldn't work. So with everything ready, a correct CG, which is actually not marked on the wings, but it should be right here near the wiring channel on the wings, the plane was ready for flight. The auto takeoff process is quite fun actually. Once you engage the launch mode, the ailerons will start moving about one time per second for a predetermined period of time, in this case about 15 seconds, so I can have plenty of time to get a hold of the plane and get into position. After 15 seconds are passed, it will start moving the ailerons every 0.5 seconds, and then you shake the tail up and down, it will throttle up, and now you just throw it. Easy as that, and it did work pretty well. And so the plane was away, no accidents, no crashes, and the parameter presets seemed to be working rather well. So, I flew around for a few minutes and was quite pleasantly surprised by how well this thing flew. Even at 2.8 kilograms, it felt so nice and it flew with such ease that I immediately decided to switch to manual mode and trim it first. And imagine my surprise when I did that and nothing in the attitude of the plane changed. It just kept going straight and didn't move at all. This is a rare occasion. All I did was eyeball the control surfaces to be as neutral as possible and apparently that is enough to make it fly straight and not need any trims. I did flip between stabilized and manual mode a few times but it just kept going straight with no weird behavior. So you can probably guess what came next. Exactly. Stow testing. And as expected, as with the big crosswind, nothing all too shocking to report here. Dropping the throttle and giving it full up elevator resulted in a slight turn and that's about it. The moment I let go of the elevator it just keeps going straight. It was an awesome feeling of reliability, if I can put it that way. We'll have to test how this behavior will change when I load it up with the gimbal and perhaps maybe some dead weight just for a test, but so far I was exceptionally pleased with the results. Next, I switched back to stabilize mode to try and do the same test, which was even more boring. Literally nothing happened, the plane just parachuted down. Those wings just refused to lose grip, especially with the autopilot obviously not slacking on the job and keeping those reaction times quite short. And then I just proceeded to fly the plane around and get a feel for it and honestly, despite its size and it was a turbulent day, don't let the stabilized footage from the DJI Osmo action fool you, the plane behaved more than okay for the conditions it was in. Only thing I can compare it to is the big crosswind which was absolutely the most stable plane that I had flown. The mini crosswind, being smaller, is impressively resistant to being thrown around and I could definitely feel the same kind of stability and performance that the big one had. It does fly in much the same manner too, like control wise and how it feels in the air, very similar and in fact it is a smaller version of the bigger plane with some changes but it is a seriously impressive plane. Sadly, I can't put both side by side at this time because as some of you may know, my Crosswind Pro went missing over the mountain, you can check that video out here. But I can tell you that in many ways this thing really is a mini version of the big one. 
both in terms of looks and flight behavior, which is quite awesome on the part of my flight dream, because often when you change the scaling of something, lots of things change with it and not necessarily for the better unless you make lots of changes. In this case, they've done a pretty darn good job indeed and have kept the looks, general shape and flight performance. I mean, I can definitely say that this plane is a descendant from the Crosswind Pro. Absolutely. And as far as speed is concerned, this one is definitely quicker than the bigger one, mainly perhaps because of its smaller size resulting in less drag and thus in higher speeds. It is not easy to slow it down, but it is able to stay in the air at around 35 to 40 km an hour, but that would be highly weight dependent. I have seen close to 90 km an hour without trying to be that quick, but we'll have to do a proper speed run at some point. Now, I did also do some endurance runs to try and see how long it will manage to fly and keep in mind I am using the same battery I had on the XUAV Clouds, a 6S3P lithium ion 10.5 amp hour capacity and it managed about 100 minutes when it was still new. Granted, the Clouds was running slower motors than these, 580 kV versus the 700 kV currently on the Mini Crosswind, so it was going to be an interesting test. Both are running the same 10x7 E props, although the Clouds was just a bit heavier. Biggest problem with such a test in this situation was that because I was using the new tracker and had not made cables for all the stuff that I need, I had to use a monitor which does not have a working DVR. Hence, my only recordings of what is actually seen on the screen during this flight were from my phone, so sadly was not able to record the whole flight, but it did last around 90 minutes in very windy conditions, which is a good result for those quick motors. They may not be the most efficient of the bunch, but the plane does have a vertical and it does appear to be close to unlimited perhaps though I'm not sure if I want to test that with this battery for extended periods of time. Now, some new motors did arrive, 510 kV, that are meant for this plane, so I will install them and redo the endurance run and let's see what the difference will be. Props will be the same. I think I can fit 11 inch props on here, but will hold out for a while as they will start touching the ground and these copter ESCs I am using do not exactly have a break, so might stick with the 10 inch ones, just try a higher pitch perhaps. I know some of you might be disappointed that there is no cloud chasing footage right now and there is only one reason for that. Crappy choice of video transmitter antenna, which I should replace soon enough and since we're already officially into autumn, there will be plenty of opportunity to chase some clouds around. We'll even test the plane with the gimbal, just hope the DJI mount's tape doesn't let go as that will be a painful loss. Might look into designing a mount for the Tarot gimbal as it was doing a great job on the Crosswind Pro and its damping system was quite efficient as well. But all of that will be in another video. Right now all I can say is that my flight dream have done an outstanding job with this plane. Having thrown it in the air numerous times, I absolutely do not understand why some people are complaining about it being too thick. But I guess trying to hold it with one hand and not trusting all to lunch would be a problem unless you're Michael Jordan. Otherwise it is pretty standard to hold with two hands and throwing it is easy due to its smaller size. My Flight Dream did say that this is the best plane they've designed so far and I have to tell you guys, I am willing to agree with this. Not sure if I'll get a chance to test it for mapping, but in certain situations it will be a useful tool, especially with its quick assembly and disassembly times and general compactness compared to other larger models. It is a great plane, it is good for FPV, it will be awesome for cloud chasing and it will probably be quite convenient for mapping because let's not forget that this one is, after all, designed for mapping as well. And in order to accommodate a larger camera, you do need a larger fuselage, so it is not without a purpose and could do lots of good. 
I do love the provided FPV deck at the front as it will make it easier to install gear there rather than have to cut into the nose like I've had to do on other models. Oh, and I absolutely do love the redundancy elevator setup with two servos. If one fails, the other one will still remain active and will improve your chances of bringing the plane home safely. Overall, a very good model from my flight dream and I will certainly put it to good use over the autumn and winter months. Just hope you guys won't get bored from the cloud chasing videos. We'll try to plug in a review every now and again and perhaps some low altitude flights as well. Just joking, we'll keep those to a minimum so they can still hold your interest. But the following is not a joke. Links to all items shown and used in this video can be found in the description below and should you decide to buy literally anything via those links, you would be supporting this channel at no additional cost to you and you will have my eternal gratitude as this is my full time job. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to say a big thank you to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to also hit that bell button so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. Happy and safe flying and I will see you in the next one.